That one's wet, I bet the other one's wet too. We're gonna go ahead and top off our camel backs now while we have ample water. And then we're gonna, we got this three quart bad boy full up. Make sure we got enough for the remainder of the day and cooking and coffee and all that. Yeah, just in case we don't find it up there. So we don't know what we're gonna find up there. We gotta gain about 240, 250 feet of elevation on some kind of steep stuff. Shouldn't be too bad. It's about three and a half miles back here on the dang trail though, just to get to this point. Are you snacking already? Want some cheeses? <laughs> gluten-free and dairy. Yeah, we haven't even done the intro yet and you're snacking. It's eating on the way here too. <laughs> <laughs> this new spot Brian and I are in, we picked it while we were getting skunked in the other spot. I think Brian was already here. Were you already here? Tell you it was a new spot. Make you feel good. Yeah, I So we set up camp and we're getting our food bags set up here. You think we'd get better at throwing these rocks or sticks up into the trees to get this thing going, but it takes us a while sometimes. Put the food bags up in case there's bears around so we don't have bears come into camp. Hopefully don't have bears come into camp. We realized what our problem was last week. We weren't taking it serious, so now we got face paint. <laughs> and camo. Oh yeah. I made Gilly sick. <laughs> you look like a floppy-eared dog. That's what I'm calling for. One of those rabbits with the floppy ears. I don't want to look too threatening so I can get close. Success will be ours now. We, yeah, we still haven't heard or seen anything. So our camp is at one end of a bench, and this bench is about a mile and a quarter, mile and a half long. And so we're kind of doing a big loop, trying to see what we can come up with. Mostly it looks like we're coming up with moose sign, because we're not seeing any definitive elk sign. From the top of this rock, we could hear many hilltops and many hill, uh, hillsides nothing going on so we continue our loop we ended up doing a three point something mile loop despite calling we just came up with nothing <coughs> The next morning we're up early and heading out we've got a pretty ambitious route we're going to do we're going to go further on the bench than we went last night and then we're going to go uphill from there And after the bugle attempts, the silence was deafening. We did find this wallow. It was not very well used, so it's not, it's not mucky and murky. And I guess we can't discount the fact that maybe a moose did that. So we're checking this big meadow. We've got some semi-treed hillsides to glass. We're just not seeing anything right now. It's our first human sign. We got a pair of boot tracks through this. So clearly, 
somebody's been in here. Those are both going downhill. We're easily like six and a half miles back. Yeah, from from that direction, whoever made these, they came in a long way. But man, we are in some beautiful country. I just can't believe there's not more sign in here. We got water, we got dark timber, we got benches, we got steep, we got a little bit of everything. There's two old cabins in here. Clearly they're super old because that tree has grown up in the middle of it. They got man, those antlers have been eaten away, haven't they? Yeah. And this cabin has a tree in it. Oh, we got an old shovel head. It's about completely rusted out. So currently today we are just not onto anything. We are about 1,100 feet above camp right now. We're pretty high up there. This place is so beautiful that it's hard to believe. We got benches, we got thick timber, we got open meadows, we got water, we got cool flats where the water's running, cool flats where the water's kind of where the ground's kind of spongy. Uh, I don't know why they're not here. Walk slow and quiet. Yeah, we're not covered up in deadfall all the time. And there's nothing. Nothing. Like one stray elk walked through here. So we're just we're just really bow hiking. Hit high elevation. Yep. Despite doing 10 miles that day we did not come up with anything. So the next morning we got up early, we packed up camp and we're gonna go head back down, cross the creek, and then go up the opposite hill, which turned into quite the adventure. Crossing the creek in the dark, not my favorite thing in the world to do. <laughs> if you wanna fall and bust your butt and get wet, this is probably the best way to do it. But at least we did find the exact spot we crossed before so we knew it was doable. That seemed easier than going across, maybe because we already did it once. Yeah. Isn't too bad. Now, being the smart guys that we are, we clearly picked about the steepest place to climb this hill. It's not so bad right here. It looks bad, but it ain't too bad right here. But of course, we ended up finding a pile of deadfall, which seems to be our forte. This is one of those steep spots. It's not an optical illusion. <laughs> So we got to the top, it took us two hours to go less than a mile and a half. That's what I'm trying to show you right there in the, in the, on the phone. That's the tracker from Onyx. Snack time. Welcome to regular guys eating snacks outdoors. We're just on our morning bow hike. Thought we'd stop for some coffee and snacks. I don't think there's an elk within our zip code. <laughs> so we got a kind of a loop plan. There's a couple meadows we want to check out, but the woods are just beautiful. It appears we have a lightning struck tree up here. 
I've got all these splinters off of it. There's some over there. Look at this tree. It's just absolutely exploded. Absolutely exploded. That big old chunk over there. And it's right on the top of the hill. Right on camp. Tops of hills. You don't want to camp up here, Brian? Well, I mean, I'll camp down there. <laughs> Not far from that lightning struck tree. All of a sudden, I saw movement up ahead, moving right to left through the trees. It turns out it was a couple of cow elk. So I've got one staring at me right through here. And I can see the butt end of another one right here. So I've got head and neck of one, butt of the other. I move forward here because I'm thinking maybe I can crest one of these hills and have them right below me. But unfortunately that just wasn't the case. They dropped off the hill and went to parts unknown. So we ended up doing the loop, we checked out those meadows, looked like there were some old wallows in them, and uh, eventually it's time to kind of head back to the cars and drop off this mountain. And we had a pretty good route planned on the map, it looked good on the map anyway. Those aspen over here are the ones we walked through yesterday. They seem like they're a long way away from here, and they kind of are, they kind of are. way down is not as easy as we thought it was going to be. It's a little steeper and a little more choked up with deadfall than what we thought. It's a good thing it's not steep. It's not treacherous. It's not slick. I had to make sure that you couldn't leave this place with an easy hike in and easy hike out. <laughs> at a point to some place on the map. That looks crappy. Let's go there. Yeah, let's figure out how to get up there. I, I really thought we were in in the good stuff when we had, had this route planned to get off, but it's not that good. No, yeah, it's way steeper than it is on the map. Yeah, the map lied. There's parts. There were parts that were as steep as the way we came up. I would think that the way that we came up was better because it was over and done with. <laughs> <laughs> if we try to go down, it might be over and done with quick. Yeah. You just get down to the bottom quickly. Yeah. Call 911. <laughs> Look like a yard sale all the way down that joker. When we 
we finally got down off that mountain, we hid our bows next to the trail, went back up the trail to where we crossed in the morning, got all of our camp stuff loaded up into our packs, went back down and we picked up our bows and then got back on the trail and headed back down toward the vehicles. out Brian's bringing sexy back so we've broke nine miles today and uh, broke ten miles yesterday and if you can hear all that in the background, it's a wedding going on, of all things, right? And the day before we did about eight miles. So now, I guess if you add that up, it's about 27 miles in 50 hours. 27 miles in 50 hours. My feet hurt. Kind of thought it was kind of strung out over three days and three calendar days but as far as time goes it's only been 50 hours since we left this parking lot right here and I am so glad to see where is she where's blaze there she is she's three cars over this place is packed probably because of the wedding Man, what did I do with my keys? If you've ever thought about heading west and hunting elk with a bow, I won't tell you not to, but I will tell you you need to be prepared for disappointment. You need to be physically prepared for what the mountains are going to throw at you with your legs and your lungs and your, your, your cardio in general. And you need to be prepared for long days, long hikes, and just kind of know that you have your equipment and your mindset right because otherwise you could get pretty disappointed pretty quick but anyway if you like this video give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button down there and as always thanks for watching